Hello everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from my makeshift hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And it has been a rainy, dreary day. <laughs> so I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that we don't have any problems with technology today. <laughs> so I'm gonna find myself first off just to make sure I'm recording and I am wonderful, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So <laughs> sometimes I get that notification on the top up there and it just came through right as I found it. So, all right. So I'm really excited to be with you tonight, live on a Thursday. It is October 1st. Oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? Like, where did the summer go? <laughs> and now that we are outside looking around in the rain and the colder temperatures around here, all our leaves are changing and we've got lots of pretty fall colors. Uh, I Hi Angela, so I put on my brown shirt today because we are making lots of um, brown cards today. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't even have them here. <laughs> so this is gonna be interesting. Hi Elaine, hi Sandy. So I think maybe I should run and grab them real quick. I have everything around me except for them. Thanks for sharing. Hi, Vicki. Um, you'll catch the replay later. That's awesome. Hi, Donna. Whew, you made it. So, Donna, my question for you is, did your card kits arrive? Because I checked the tracking on them last night, and they were in Minnesota, but they weren't delivered. So, I'm really curious um, how your package is doing. Everybody else's that got the to-go versions, um, they are delivered. So, Hi, Patricia. Thanks for sharing. Hi, Diane. Diane was with me last night, so she's back for round two of more fun. <laughs> so, all right. So I want to vote. <laughs> Should I go run and get the samples of the cards so that we have them to make like along or should, hi Mary, hi Chris, hi Jean, or should I wing it off of memory? And uh, the, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. I'm worried that if people are doing the class with me, they want to look at the sample. <laughs> so tell me, what should I do? Hi, Jean from Arizona. Um, oh my goodness, Donna, that's awesome. I'm so happy that you got them today. Hi, Anne. Um, hey, Faye is joining us too. Awesome. So you girls are rolling in. So reply in the comments. Let me know if I should go run and give my get my samples or if I shall make them off of memory. <laughs> so um, while you girls tell me what I should do, I want to thank everybody for doing this class with me. Uh, Jean says wing it. I love it. <laughs> so um, you girls really love this class. These cards were amazing. I had 44 people sign up for this class. Um, oh, Elaine says get them. <laughs> so Elaine wants to look at them as I'm doing them. I bet that's what's going to happen. So um, I just want to call out everybody that's doing the to-go version. I'm not sure if you're live with me tonight or if you're catching the replay. Anne says get them too. So Anne is with me. Jill Butson. Jean is doing the cards as well. Mo, Lori, Angela, D, Karen, Lila, Vicky, Barb, Connie, Melanie, Elaine, Lynn, Barb, Wendy, Mary, Donna, Melissa, Lisa, Joanna, and Pam. Wow. <laughs> That's all the to-go kits. I think I made 26 that were either mailed out or porch pickup. I had 11 last night that did these live, and I also had five that did them on Saturday. So, oh, you girls love these cards, and Diane says that they were awesome and beautiful. So, Yes, they are gorgeous, and I think that's why so many people wanted to do this class. So um, I think that as people are starting to roll in, Mo's here, yes, awesome. You guys, give me 30 seconds. Talk amongst yourself. If you talk about me, just know I might see it later, but give me 30 seconds. <laughs> if anybody pops on, tell them that I'll be right back. I'm going to go get them quick. Hang on. <laughs> they were just on my table so I have them here so now we have the cards to look at as we go through class so I know that for all those people that I listed off sometimes it's really nice having the picture of the card right there while I'm working on it with you so 
Lila's from Southwest Florida. Yay. <clears throat> so yeah, Chris made them already. So that's awesome. I'm so excited to do these cards with you. But I always have a couple things that I want to tell you first off. Um, it is raining here tonight. And I know that sometimes when it's raining by me, the internet goes haywire. So just know that if anything happens to our broadcast tonight, that I will probably finish recording it and then I will upload the whole new version. And I've had to do that a couple times. And so if for some reason you lose me and like you can't get me back, don't fret, just hang tight and just know that if you like and follow my cards by Christine Page, you'll be notified as soon as I upload the video. And hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. <laughs> it's like one in 10 times something crazy happens. So um, let's hope and cross our fingers. But <clears throat> because it rained today and it rained yesterday and it rained the day before and the day before, my concrete didn't get poured. So I don't have a driveway yet. So that's sad. So that didn't happen this week. But my electrician came and he put up vanity lights. So <laughs> there's a vanity light in the bathroom. That's exciting. <laughs> Otherwise, not much project or process, progress on the project today or this week. So not much to update there. I do want to say thank you to everybody. You everybody's amazing. It was the end of the Stampin' Up! year last night, um, September 30th. Uh, Stampin' Up! doesn't work on January 1st to December 31st. Hi, Julie. They work on September, wait, October 1st through September 30th. So a big shout out to all my customers and my team for helping me. I know this last year was very successful um, for me and my team, and I couldn't do it without all of you. So thank you so much. I, I don't know if many people know this, but I was 86 in the world last year and I had a private secret goal and I maybe only told a few people that I wanted to be in the top 50 in the world. I know, go big or go home or do both. Um, so, um, hi Pat Torres. So my goal was to be in the top 50 in the world and we don't know quite um, yet what the results are. Uh, our convention is the first week of November. And so we'll find out where everybody sits probably the first part of November. And I'm super excited to share that with you, no matter where I end up. <laughs> I love doing what I do and you guys help me do that. So um, just just thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me and helping me through all this crazy COVID too. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so the MS benefit is the Saturday. Thank you so much for everybody who signed up. If you did get a to-go version and they're going to be mailed, then we're making them on Saturday during the benefit and they'll be in the mail on Monday. So you can expect them sometime next week. So thank you to everybody who registered for that. We're excited for you to get your cards. And if you're going to be there in person, we look forward to seeing you and stamping with you. So uh, that should be fun. Come anytime between 10 and 3 and we will make some cards together. And upcoming classes. Okay, so... I know you guys, oh, thanks, Mary Lou. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know you guys like to see the cards that I make as I make them. And after class last night, I got some cards designed. I know, I don't know how I do it, but um, <laughs> I made two cards for the October monthly class. So I wanted to share them with you because if anybody places an order um, now, tonight, tomorrow, or by Saturday, and you email me and tell me that you want to take the October class and get get the card kits. Um, it would be free. I think that one there's three cards, so it's free with a thirty five dollar order. Where the fun folds is free with a forty dollar order. So I want to show those both to you. So I'm gonna flip this down. So I think I showed these to you last week. These are the fun folds. Uh, so that opens. I don't know what the name of that is, but it's just a different way of cutting and then uh, folding it. And then here's the poinsettia one, and that looks like that. This one's a crazy one, so it ties shut, and then it opens like that, and then it opens like that. So there's a couple different openings going on. And this one's my favorite. Um, it's I just love the way that this opens. Just think of this card in so many different patterns, themes, occasions. Just the fun fold of this and this little pocket thing that comes out. So this is my fun folds. This is what we're doing live next week, Thursday. If you still want to sign up for that, you have till tomorrow. I, um, I'm going to be making the kits over the weekend, so you've got to let me know. And then this is what I worked on for the monthly class for October. Okay, so fall is in the air, right? So I love these fall colors. The peacock is just, I love it, with the espresso. And this uses the autumn goodness, I think, 
and die set. And I pulled in Gather Together. Hi, Jay. So <clears throat> this is one for October that we're going to do. So not next week, Thursday, but the week after. So that's one of the cards, a nice fall card. And then here's another fallish card. Who doesn't love all the flowers this time of year with the mums and the, the like fall colors? <clears throat> so this is, these die sets are kind of the same. One's Autumn Goodness and one's Autumn Wheelbarrow. And so when you open this up, hi Karen. So when you open that up, you got a little pumpkin in there. So those are two of them. And the last one that I'm gonna do features this stamp set in the pines and the dies. And so it's gonna be that it could be used, I think as a Christmas card or a fall card. I'm gonna try to make it interchangeable. So just know that's in two weeks. And so taking RSVPs for that. And then just a reminder that the sign up for Paper Pumpkin is by October 10th. And that's eight Christmas cards. And I just wanna tell you this tonight because sometimes they run out of their subscriptions. And so you want to RSVP early if you wanna get this um, by signing into the Paper Pumpkin website and registering for it. So, <clears throat> all right. Oh, I can't forget this. Okay, disclaimer here. Hi, Fancy. Disclaimer here. These three cards are absolutely gorgeous. Diane Bogenhagen made them, and Diane Bogenhagen's on my team, and she's going to be a featured teacher on October 20th in person. So I have, that's my disclaimer. You girls are going to see these cards. And uh, they're not going to have a to-go option. They're for in-person. Diane is on my team for a little over a year. And this is her first class. Oh, my God. I can't wait to show you these. Okay. And I'm going to share them with you. So if you like these cards, you can take screenshots <laughs> and make them on your own. So oh, that's everybody's favorite. So, okay, here we go. So she's, it's called Nature's Best Card Class. So if you're local in the Fond du Lac area and you want to do this class, you better reach out to me because... We are actually going to do October 20th and the 27th, and the 20th is almost full. We have one spot left, and there's like seven spots left on the 27th, but here she's got the Mallard, so that's one of her cards, and so this is going to be date night for Tyler and myself. Tyler absolutely loved these cards, and he told me that if Diane did a class, he would take the class with me. So we're going to sit and have Diane be our teacher. So this is another one. This is using the Campology stamp set. Look at that. Awesome, fun fold. Oh, she did a fabulous job on that. Look at these cute little buttons from the all dressed up dies. Okay, so that. But then this is the technique part of this class. And I have a hard time saying this, but I think it's called the Retiform technique. And this was just featured on my blog last week. And it's using a post-it note and shading it and then stamping your images. And so this is the third card that we're going to be making for the Nature's Best Card class. Hi, Mary. So I had to give a shout out to Diane. And if anybody's local watching this and wants to do this class, uh, we're going to get it published and um, emailed and put on Facebook so that you guys can start registering for it. Boom. Yes. Good job, Diane. Love it. Love it. Okay. So... Here we are at the Gilded Autumn, beautiful autumn card class. So let's just have a look-see here where we are in the catalog. So let's see what I gotta do here. I think I gotta go like this. Okay, let's go to page 45. Let's see here. Okay, Gilded Autumn, gorgeous, all fallsy. If you are into fall colors, this is the suite that you want to get. <clears throat> you probably think you have enough fall stuff already. <laughs> retiform. Yes, that's okay. It's the retiform technique. Okay, so if you think you have enough fall stuff, <laughs> you may have a hard time saying no to this if you love fall. Um, the, oh, the paper is gorgeous, and I will have to disclaim it's on back order until November 30th, but the item has not been turned off yet, so if you do order it, you'll get in the queue, and Stampin' Up! will send you a back order for it. There's a stamp set and a punch pack. So here's the stamp set is called Beautiful Autumn. Now the suite is called Gilded Autumn. That's where there's a little bit of difference going on here. And so the punch pack has the little acorn, the maple leaf, and the oak leaf. And these adorable acorn trinkets. Oh my gosh. Okay, so who has them? They are the most adorable thing in the world. Just picture, if you're into jewelry, these little things, you can make them into earrings or you could put them on a necklace. 
they're heavy, so you have to be careful. Uh, we're doing two cards tonight that use them, and I will tell you, you do not want to mail them uh, without, they, they need like a package. They're not, um, they're not regular mail, they're like a parcel rate. They are thick, so they will not fit through that quarter inch slot. So just know that they're a hand deliver or a padded envelope. And then we have the basket weave and metallic ribbon. And so that stuff is on back order until sometime next week, I think. It's mint and then a Cajun color or like a coppery color. Very, very pretty combination. And every card um, is using that. So the paper, yes, Donna, this paper is on back order until November 30th. You can order it. If you go and put in an order, it allows you to order it. The item is not turned off. It's just not gonna ship until stock is replenished at Stampin' Up's inventory in Utah until later in November. Then the brush to metallic is amazing. I think so many people did not realize how awesome this paper is until they started using it and touching it and feeling it. There's two tan, well, they're bronze, two gold and two copper. They look weird to me. Like that should be the, <laughs> that should be the bronze one and that should be the gold and I have no idea. That should be called tan. <laughs> That's how it is in my head, but they're so pretty. And then if you flip it over, you've got a couple more samples the punch pack shown again, and the stamp set. So we use almost all of these stamp sets in the class tonight. Now, if you don't have the stamp set, you can definitely improvise and use something else. Not a problem. Um, I'm not sure though on some of the cards how we're gonna do it. So when you get the to-go versions from me, I try to include extra paper and the stamped or um, the die, not the stamp, the die cut or the punched piece so that you can improvise. So we'll see how it goes. Um, oh, D, your paper ship. So that's awesome. Okay, so which one shall we do first? Um, I think this one. <laughs> oh, because I got to show you how to do this bow. Okay, so you guys all, just so you know, those that did, got the to-go kits, you got a little plastic baggie. D, you have to check and tell me if I got yours in there or if I forgot. I think I put it in there if I had to guess, but you know, I'm you just yeah so <laughs> um but everybody got a little acorn tied to a bow and a gold hoop and another little bow a vanilla bow and some um, linen thread and all that is in a little baggie so there you're just going to pull out the pieces as you need them okay so we're going to start with this one and that is a kit that i have here all right so so if you guys are working on this at home with me i did send out a, the pdf tutorial um yesterday or Tuesday. Maybe it was Tuesday. So you should have a list of all the things that you need for class. <clears throat> Hopefully you got your stamping done ahead of time. <clears throat> so you were just going to order for fall. Oh yeah, Donna. <laughs> that is so sad because if you do want this for fall stuff, it's not going to arrive in time. So that is a sad thing. I will give you a sad face. I definitely agree with you on that. Um, so for those that got the to-go kit from me though, uh, you all have a piece of mint paper like this and you had these two little things die cut out of it. I got paper conservative with that. I'm like, oh, why don't we just cut them out of the mint paper? So they are cut in a manner that this piece of paper should cover them up so you wouldn't see the holes back here. Just be careful when you're gluing this down that you don't put glue to cut, you know, ooze through your paper. So we'll talk about that when we get that far. Okay, so let me get these guys. I need a little bit more room here. <laughs> All right, so I did do some of my stamping ahead of time just to save a little time, you know, the magic of TV. So you have your espresso paper here. It's your eight and a half by five and a half, your traditional size. Do you notice I even put my brown jewelry on tonight just so I match all the paper? Look at this, my my shirt that I have on, it's like way too long for me, so I fold it back, is Early Espresso. It's like one of, I realized that Early Espresso is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> Every card that we're making tonight uses Early Espresso. All right, so <clears throat> what you're gonna wanna do is a little assembly here. So just remember you have those two holes cut here. So what I would recommend doing when you glue is to not put glue over those whole areas. So maybe go more towards the edge of your paper. And I have a big goo ball on here. So let's get, <laughs> let's get that off of there. There we go. Okay, and I had Nancy, naughty Nancy's messaging me and I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything important. It was just a thumbs up. Okay, so you're gonna put um, this piece down here. Hi, Julie. So 
the mint paper. If you're wondering what size stuff is. No purple, I know, right? <laughs> so this mint is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. This piece of DSP is three and five eighths by one and a half. And then these little guys, now you have to make sure you get them in order. When I put them in your kits, I tried to put the top one as the left one, the middle, middle, and the bottom is the right. So this was a piece of DSP that actually made a pattern. It's a piece of three and three eighths by three. And what happens then is when you split them apart like this, so I cut one and an eighth, each one of these strips is one and an eighth wide. And then when you glue them down, you get that nice same even margin. So grab the first one, so, so this, the left one. I start left and then I go right and then I do middle. So you wanna lay them down in front of you to make sure that you have them right. Hi, Heather Brenner. So that one will go first. Flip over the last one or the one on the right and put a little adhesive glue on the back of that one. And so what you're doing is getting it so that the margin looks the same all the way around. And then the last piece, put a little glue on the back of that and you're just gonna center that and Hopefully, hi, Angie Brantner. This one will go right in the middle. And as long as I cut them all at about one and an eighth, you should have about that same margin here. So don't worry about this. This gets covered up by the ribbon, okay? So when you cut DSP, I cut these at three so that you could get four rows out of it. I could have definitely cut them longer, but by leaving them at three, it allowed me to get more paper out of, um, like for each kit. So now grab your tear and tape, and we're gonna put some of that on the back edge here, and we're gonna work on getting our ribbon tied down, or not even tied down, just adhered down. So this is some of that mint ribbon. It's called basket weave ribbon, and that's gonna go right over the seam. Now, if you want it down further or up higher, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, but that you just wanna cover up so you can't see where the seams are. Okay. Now you're gonna get yourself a couple more pieces of tear and tape. And that, oh, nope, ha ha, I lied. We don't need tear and tape now. <laughs> I was, what I wanted to do was put this down over it, but this is saved for the bow. So hang on, that's good. So now what, oh yeah, you know what I like to do? I like to make a ribbon sandwich. <laughs> so we're gonna put that on there anyways. <laughs> so what I'm doing is really securing the ribbon. <laughs> See, I was on the right track. All right, so hi Karen Wetstein. So put that tear and tape on top of the ribbon and now I'm gonna just put a little bit of liquid glue around my edges. And that's gonna go right on top of the card base. If you like to pop things up, you could definitely use dimensionals uh, to pop that layer up, but I'm gonna do mine flat. That acorn adds a lot of bulk to the card, so popping it up would make it even more bulky, so that's why I chose to put mine down flat. Okay, so in your kits, you should have two pieces of paper that look like this. If, if you recall, these are from what? What are they? The Celebration Labels dies. these guys. We did a class uh, a few weeks ago called Plaid Tidings. And so these, I don't have it in here, but these were cut out from the smallest label. And you're wondering like, well, how did I get my brown to come to the top and to the bottom? So they're the same size. So what you do is grab a paper trimmer or a scissors, really doesn't matter. If you take your scissors, I would start in this little groove here and just make sure you end in that little groove on the other side. If you like things to be straight, grab a little paper trimmer and just cut it in half. So what you're doing is cutting it in half the long ways here, okay? And then, so your sentiment here, this says my heart is grateful for you. In class, we had a couple different options to choose from. Wishing you a lovely day was from a forever lovely set. And um, I have here, where is the set? It was right in front of me. Oh, I covered it up with the paper drawer. So the stamp set here, my heart is grateful for you, comes from the beautiful autumn. So that's this one right here. So to adhere this together, what I'm going to do is put a little glue here and a little glue there. So... Also, just a reminder 
after class is done, I'm going to be doing some drawings for Mystery Game Night. We had 51 people submit entries, so I've got two prizes I'm giving away. And then we're having a drawing for the top fan. We're also going to do uh, announce who the newsletter winner was from September and who the card class challenge winner is. So lots of prizes later. <laughs> I have a whole list of them, so I don't forget anything. Okay, so did you see what I did? I just glued it to the top and the bottom. Don't matter, like don't worry about that, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna take a couple dimensionals. And because it's dark brown, what I'm gonna do is grab my black ones and put four of them on there to, to pop that up. Now you're probably thinking, well wait, what about your little, <laughs> we were calling them dingleberries last night, but they aren't, they're a little, they're foliages. <laughs> so what I'm doing is putting this centered left to right and kind of the gap that is where the brown is, that's kind of the, the width of the ribbon. And so I'm centering that over that. Okay, I gotta show you how to do this bow. So everybody who got the kit from me, I made your bows for you. So I tied 44 of these little suckers. <laughs> I wanna show you how I do it. A lot of you guys ask me, how do you tie the bows? So this one's special because this little acorn is actually tied onto this bow. It's not separate. You definitely could have made the bow and attached them separately, but I liked the look of having it on the acorn. So you have to take this copper ribbon and feed it through it very carefully. See, oh, I almost had it there. Let me go to this end. So it really does help when one end is pointier <laughs> than the other, because then it starts going in really good. Um, and my glasses, don't let me see these things close up. <laughs> the struggle is real and it shouldn't be. Hang on, we'll get that little sucker. Okay, so now that you have this on, your string. So you guys can do this with anything. We have some dog trinkets that are really cool that are dog bones and then there's a little heart. So you can do that with these too. So the bow makers are amazing. I have a more coming in tomorrow. Hi, Danielle. I have another shipment of these coming in tomorrow thanks to Kathy Miller. She's amazing. Uh, so if you need bow makers, reach out to me. I have more coming in tomorrow. So what you're gonna do so <laughs> you guys want a video on this, and so here's my video. Um, this, the little acorn, what's so important about this is the acorn needs to be, so I'm a right-handed person, so to me, yeah, you just gotta watch. The acorn to me is, so think about it this way, the acorn's on my left side, and you've got these crossing, they're making an X. Then on my left side, where the acorn is, I'm gonna bring it up and over. Okay, so now it's the tail over here is coming out the back end and then it comes underneath. And so now the acorn can let, like it can hang, it can hang there like that. That's the front. And then Mary, you'd like a bow maker, perfect. Um, now I've got these back here, these loose ends. What we have to do is tie them and I just make a knot. It's not even a knot because it's only one time. And then the main important thing here is that these tails are going wonky. One's going this way and one's going that way. As you tighten, you have to tighten to the left and the right going down. And I'm making sure that my knot is centered here right in the middle. So I tighten this as tight as I can get it. And that is how everybody got one of these little, <laughs> little dudes in their to-go kits, okay? It is lovely. I love <laughs> this acorn on this copper ribbon is amazing. So that is gonna go right about here. And we have these little guys left. So Stella's got to come out and show her face tonight. She had too much date <laughs> date time last week Thursday. So let's get her a little bit involved tonight and put a little workout for her. So the other thing you could Stella on here that would be really cool is this brown edging up and down here. And uh, I know that the camera doesn't show it or do it justice, but when you see this close up, it's really cool. All right, so there's that. Now, these guys, these guys. Grab your mini glue dots, and what I'm gonna do is put a glue dot at the end of each one. So there's one. Be careful not to rip them as you're taking them off. 
<laughs> and then, the, oh, it stuck to my finger and it ripped. Okay, so we're just gonna put it right back on there. And then this is just gonna tuck underneath the ribbon right here. So just wedge it right up in there. So that guy's gonna go that way. Thanks, Francie. I always make bows for classes. Um, unless they're like game night <laughs> or something else. I did recently where I didn't do them. <laughs> but normally, like if you get like just card kits from me like this, I make all your bows. So that is a perk of taking my classes. <laughs> so everybody's got cute little bows. All right, so now this guy, he's pretty heavy. You got to make sure you doctor him really good with dimensionals, not dimensionals, glue dots. So we're going to put one right at the knot here, right at the base. And then we're also going to put one underneath the back of the acorn there. And then that's going to get set right kind of above where your berry, your, um, your foliage is. Okay, so we've got one wonky tail going that way. So I don't like my tails going all crazy like so i'm gonna grab another glue dot and we're gonna put that right underneath where i think the ribbon should lay and i'm gonna kind of put him right into it and pop up my leaves my leaves my my bunny ears here a little bit and trim our tails is last here so oh thanks for sharing mary okay then trim your tail here and then trim your other tail, just like so. Okay, not done yet. We have one last thing. In your kit, everybody, hi, Kathy. Oh, Kathy Jackson, I just made a bow. You wanted a video on how to make a bow, and I just showed how to make that lovely little baby bow. So I'll be doing another one, so pay attention. Okay, everybody got some pearls in their kits. You got two, there's my glue one, you got two. Uh, or three of them actually you got this one and I have a couple down at the bottom and then I have one near the top here of that side all right so oh the inside so hi Cindy so the inside here I've already stamped mine so in the stamp set here there is this leaf thing it's two stamp it's like two step stamping you're going to stamp this in espresso and then the other part of it is in Cajun Craze, and that's this right here. And I've done it for a second strength. I guess it doesn't matter. It depends on how dark you want it. Now, if you don't have this stamp set, find any other pretty leaf to put in the bottom um, corner here and any sentiment that you want. My rule is if you want to write more, put your sentiment up higher. And if you want to stamp or write less, then stamp it lower. So what you're going to do then, once you have that all stamped, then you can go ahead and adhere that the inside of the card <laughs> make sure that you got it face in the right way that's always important okay Bay likes the card isn't it pretty so this is a good template if you're a card maker and you love just an easy idea it's really nothing crazy it's just a three and three eighths by three piece of dsp and you cut it at one and an eighth and then this bottom portion is just a different piece of DSP that coordinates with it. Put it on a piece of cardstock and put it on your card base and then make a little label with a sentiment. And that's that's what you got. <laughs> so here we go. We got one done. All right. So next on our list of cards, we're going to make this one. Okay. So nothing to <laughs> same kind you guys. I went all crazy with these mints and the brown. I just loved it. Okay. So let's get this guy back in this one so I don't get confused later. And then we'll pull out this one so I can tell you measurements on this one. So I've learned if you guys are demonstrators at all and you have a hard time remembering measurements and stuff, Stampin' Up! gives uh, you, you can buy these postcards or get a piece of paper. And I, as I'm designing the card, I write down all my measurements and my products that I use in the, in the card so that I don't have to remember it later. <laughs> So, all right, so we've got all our bits and parts here. You got the class for me. It's again an espresso base, eight and a half by five and a half. Uh, yours are scored. So, what you're going to do then is burnish the edges like that. So, Dee's asking, what kind of glue do I use? The my, Yours creates bubbles. So, I use what Stampin' Up! sells the mini, the Tombow Mono Adhesive mono liquid glue uh it's four dollars and d the next time you place an order you could add this to your order because then it would help you qualify for another class 
Um, this is what I use about 90% of the time when I'm adhering paper onto paper. Um, so we have here two pieces of cardstock. One is the very vanilla and one is mint. They're both five and a quarter by four. One's the inside and one is the outside. And then we have two mats here for the outside. <laughs> I try to be organized, Brenda. That's what I gotta be. Otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy. Um, the cage in here is four and three eighths by three and three eighths. And this is some of that gold. Oh my gosh, you gotta get some gold to get that girl. <laughs> this is gold. And it is four and one eighth by three and an eighth. So basically, I took a quarter inch off two sides. And that will go on here. This DSP is three and seven eighths by one and an eighth. I think I might have had it just a hair shorter. So some of you might have it more, a little bit more gold showing. I'm not quite sure how I did to that. Hi, Melanie. Uh, you've got a piece of, well, you've got three vanilla squares. My disclaimer too is if you ever get anything that's missing in your kit, you gotta let me know so I can help you out <laughs> or improvise and use something else. But you should have three squares like this, and these are from the stitched squares. They're gonna make it look like little pictures hanging on the wall. And then you'll have in this kit some of the Cajun ribbon and also the mint ribbon. Then I've got two of these in your kit. I didn't know how hard it is for you to stamp little sentiments on little pieces of paper like this, so I cut out four of these for everybody. Not four, two. So they're from the classic label punch, and I gave you two because I figured that by the fourth time you're going to get it straight. <laughs> so you get four shots. You get the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. And honestly, if you can't get it on the fourth, use a piece of vanilla and just, or leave it off. The card looked really pretty not having a sentiment too. In class last night, a few people left the sentiment off. Okay, so I've got mine stamped with many things. Then in your kit, you've got a scrap of vanilla. That's probably something like this. I brought an extra one down in case I make a mistake, but we're gonna do some stamping. So grab out your piercing mat because these stamps are photopolymer. So you want a little extra cushion for the stamp to push on. <laughs> so grab your espresso. Oh, you're my stamping idol. I love it. Thanks, Brenda. <laughs> so grab your espresso and this little piece here, you're gonna stamp... Now, if you don't have the stamp set, hopefully you have something else to use uh, to put in there because if you have other little leaves, that would work too. But I've given you enough to do three little things here, the maple leaf, the oak leaf, and then the acorn. And in your kits, I didn't know who had what. So I gave you a piece like this but then I also gave you the punch outs of each one of these, but I couldn't stamp stamp them. So they're just the punch out. So if you feel inclined to want them to look just like this, you could draw an edge around them and make veins on your leaves and then color them with markers or colored pencils. And then your acorn too, you could draw him in there so that you have something similar. So again, I gave you a piece like this so that you could... Um, that you could stamp and punch if you have that, but I also gave you them punched out in case you need them, or in case you want to just draw them, hand draw them. So this is crushed curry. Oh man, he just flew off. We had a, almost a catastrophe last night because this little guy flew off and he landed in Mary's backpack and we searched high and low and we found it in her backpack. We were happy. They, they are little, so you don't want to lose these little dudes. So this is two-step stamping. You want to hover over the top until you get it where it needs to go. It's always easier to do the outline first and then to do the fill-in color. So that was crushed curry for the oak leaf. And then we've got Cajun craze for the maple leaf. And I have it right here. So this is the maple. Again, ink up good. Don't be afraid of the stamp. Hover over it until you get it where you want it. And if you get it off slightly, then just move over a hair and fill it in again with a little bit lighter version. So I, like, I stamped it twice there just to fill it in. And then we have the acorn. Oh my God, I love the acorn. It's so adorbsy. <laughs> Crumb cake for the base. So grab the little dude. 
He's got a little guy here. He's so easy to stamp too. He fits really nicely. So there's crumb cake for the bottom. Okay, and then soft suede for the top. Okay, and again, these guys, as you use them, their stick starts to go away. And then you wanna be really careful that they don't fall off on you. Hi, Julie. Okay, so there's that. They're all stamped. Got a little bit of mess going on. Punches. So um, if you've got the punches, what you'll do is just line them up. They fly, watch out, they fly very far. And then we've got the oak leaf here. And that one flew into my lap and onto the floor. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I have no idea where it went. Jeez Louise. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> oh, I don't know where it went, guys. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it completely flew backwards. <laughs> so hang on, we got that one. We're gonna do the acorn. I thought it would land on my shirt and life would be good. So let's see here, there's that one. I'm gonna look one more time. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna have to stamp a new one. Oh, here he is. Okay, I found him. Okay, so there's that little guy. All right, so those are the three punches. So it was really, really hard when I saw the stamps. Like, what am I going to do? These are such little baby stamps. And like, this is the card that I came up with. And I think that Jay Shante, you're watching, I was inspired by a card that you made. So I kind of like cased your card to make this one. Okay, a little bit here. So it's really hard to see on this, but there is a little bit of leaf action going on around the edge. In the stamp set, there are this, there's this little, what did I just do? <laughs> Girls, the purple is confusing me. Okay, so there's this, it looks like little leaves like that. So we're going to just stamp that around the edges. Like, so if you have a really dark ink pad, you might want to stamp off before doing it. But as I started to use, you can see that's lighter there. As we've been all going to the middle of the pad, it's like a little bit lighter. So you could do a combination of light and dark leaves. See, that's really dark. So we're gonna just flip this over. So this is what I did on my sample. I just stamped off and then I did the whole thing at second strength all the way around. You do not have to worry, hi Sue. You don't have to worry about the inside because that gets covered up. So you're just gonna go all the way around now, if you don't have the stamp, find something else that would look really pretty or leave it off. It really, it's up to you how you wanna do it. Couple more here and one more. Squeeze that one right in there. Okay, so that's all I use for mint macaron for ink in this whole entire class. So we have the outline done and now I think we're at the point where we're ready to assemble. So you have your card base. You have to remember this is a horizontal card, so don't put it in <laughs> vertical unless you really want it vertical. Oh, good call, Jean. Yes, that is a, a perfect idea. Uh, Versamark, if you wanna get tone on tone, so like the color of the cardstock, use Versamark. But what I did is I just went lightly around there and that kinda has the same effect, Jean. I love it, thanks for sharing that idea. Okay. Then we have our gold, and I'm gonna glue that onto the Cajun Craze. Now, this gold foil or this brushed gold paper, it's slippery. So you have to, when you're gluing things to it, you gotta let them sit on it before, otherwise they'll move around. Okay, then I'm gonna glue this one on. So this is the back side of the paper that we just used on the last card. So we're gonna take that, and that gets centered along the bottom here, and you have a little gold margin on the left and the right. Now this is the one where it's very slippery. You can see that, it just wants to slip and slide. And so once you get it on here, don't, try not to brush against it and move it. Now you have your three little squares, and I just glued them flat, so flip. So when you guys get die cuts, the rough, edge is the back side and the more smooth rolled edge is the top so that you know that there is a top and a bottom when you have die cutting the rough edge is the bottom the rolled smooth top is the nice side 
Okay, so now I'm gonna flip this one over. We're gonna put him. So I'm gonna try to match that same margin here. And so it's gonna go there and then I'm gonna try to put that along the top. Hi, Kim. Then we're gonna put this one on the right hand side. Again, this is the left, right, middle drill. <laughs> and then yeah, this one is gonna go in the middle. So I kept the margin all the way around the edge of the same and then we have a little bit. Now, if you want, you could move these over so that they have about the same. So now they're about the same. That works too. And you saw that? Like you could move them because of that brushed gold paper. It's really wiggly and so you can move it a little bit. So, all right, that's where we've got that. Now flip that over and we're gonna use our tear tape again. So put down a piece on each end and we're gonna work on getting the mint ribbon down first. So everybody's got about maybe five inches of that. And I've got a little gold showing above it, about the same as what's up here. And then I'll just tuck the tails into it behind. And you see how I do that? I don't flip it over and try to do it from the back. I look at it from the front to make sure I'm straight. And then grab two more pieces of tear and tape. And this time, what I'm gonna do is take the curry, or the, <laughs> the curry, the this copper ribbon, and I'm gonna tuck that tail, and then I'm gonna put this one over the top of it. Instead of putting three I'm only, I'm still gonna do two. So, oh man, I was really stingy on mine. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. I have to do, <laughs> I hope I didn't cut yours that short. Let's see here, did I even cut myself enough? Let's see. I hope I, <laughs> my mom cut all these for everybody. Oh yeah, I can make it. He's just barely touching, <laughs> flipping over the edge. My, my mom helps me and she likes to cut the ribbon. So my mom was a, is a seamstress. And so she gets enjoyment, I think, out of cutting ribbon. <laughs> so, okay. And a big shout out to Pat Torres. She's taking the class tonight. She helped do all the die cutting. All these little squares, she cut out 108 plus 24 more. She cut out all the circles on an X card. She cut all the greenery out. Pat Torres, you are awesome. Thank you so much for helping me. <laughs> so I'm hoping you're enjoying the class tonight. All right, so then uh, let's see what I did. I popped this one up. So what we're gonna do is grab some dimensionals and I'm gonna put six of them on here. And I'm gonna put some right over that tear and tape so that that doesn't wanna stick down onto the card base. I'm gonna go crazy with dimensionals, okay? <laughs> I don't usually use this money, but I'm going for it. Okay, it's not gonna wanna come off because these black dimensionals are super duper sticky. So. Get those all picked off. And then that's just gonna get centered on the front of the card here. I'll make sure I got that going the right way. Um, so again, if you like things a little flatter, don't pop this one up. Put it a little bit, um, um, put it on with liquid glue. All right, so there's that. <laughs> now we got these little guys. So we're gonna flip them over and use some little dimensionals. I am lucky, Francie. I have great helpers. And there's Pat. She is enjoying helping me, I think. <laughs> she says she does. So I am so help so thankful. And I've got a great team that supports me here locally, too, when I, I'm short on supplies <laughs> yeah, so that I don't have to do expedited shipping. I'm so lucky. So we're going to put these guys right in the middles of our squares like that. Okay. Now, last, these little guys. I have here too many things. <laughs> two of them. So this is what the card looks like without having a sentiment. And it looks awesome without a sentiment. So if you don't want to put a sentiment, don't go for, do, don't do it. But if you want to, I have mine kind of right in the middle here. So, and again, that's using the classic label punch so that I've got all yours in your kits for you. Um, then we're going to grab a little liquid glue and put that right in the middle. And that, I put that flat and I'm just centering it left to right and a little bit closer to the bottom. Now, if you like things centered better, like right in the middle, go for it. Like it's your card, <laughs> you can make it however you want. All right, inside. So 
I have a piece of very vanilla here and I'm gonna put one of these little guys on it. So I should have done that when I had it open. Let's get that out of the way. Hi, Hillary. So we're gonna do our outline in espresso, just like that. And then we're gonna do the Cajun craze in the full one, just like that. Okay, now whatever you want to, thanks for sharing, Hillary, I really appreciate it. Uh, whatever you want for a sentiment, go for it. I like to leave my cards blank. I don't, you guys think I'm crazy, I think, but I don't stamp a lot on the inside of my cards because it leaves it very versatile for me to use it for what I want. So if I need a birthday card, I could always stamp happy birthday in this later. If I need a get well card, I could stamp get well in it later. Or I can just write to my heart's content on the inside and leave it blank. I always like to decorate it though. Thanks for sharing, Cindy. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's glue that on the inside. And I think that's it. We got another one done, just like that. How are you girls doing? Those that are taking the class with me, how many of you are making your cards along with me right now? I'm really curious to know. <laughs> Am I going okay speed for you that you can keep up okay? You know me, I cruise through my cards here. Okay, we're gonna do this one next because we're saving my favorite one for last. <laughs> so this is a pocket card and I like these kind of cards. They're actually pretty simple and that you have to have a stapler, so make sure you got your stapler handy. Oh, Jean's making them good. So then this is like that. It pops out. You can just slide it right in. Now, the staple is like only up here, so that does sneak out the side if you're not straight. But the highlight, like just think, any DSP on the bottom, here's more of the, this is the copper brushed metallic paper. We're going to do another bow here. Oh, good. Wendy's making hers along with. Great, great, great. Um, okay, it's your first class with me. I love it. So I owe you a, a, um, an email, Kate. I did not forget about you. <laughs> um, so just know that anybody who is taking the class with me, um, I did send you the PDF tutorial, so you can always refer back to that. Um, or you can catch this as a replay. Um, it's always in the video section of my Facebook page. You guys can go back at any time. Um, every Thursday from May 27th on, I did an online class. And prior to that, during COVID days, from March 23rd to May 26th, I did a class every weeknight. I didn't miss one at all. <laughs> so, all right. Now, this one's different. Your base here is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and it's scored at five and a half and one and a half. So, it's your hot dog style card not the hamburger, it's a hot dog, log and skinny. And so what happens is this basically folds in half. So that's where it's scored at five and a half. And then we've got one extra score. Oh my, I think I forgot a stapler. <laughs> we This one just folds back at one and a half. So that goes like that. So that's how we're doing this. Let's just look here. I have a desk that I actually, let's see if I can open this without, oh, I have a stapler, we're in luck. Look at this girlfriend. This is my, <laughs> an old stapler. <laughs> let's just see if there's staples in it. Oh yeah, she's locked and loaded. All right, so <laughs> you do need a stapler, everybody, if you're gonna do this card. Well, I lied. You could do liquid glue or tear and tape, but you have to be super careful, not that you get glue or ooze on the inside here because then your pocket's not gonna work so good. So, this is my trick. I don't like to staple with the rough outside part out because then it gets caught, so I always make sure the smooth side is to the outside. So, by doing that, it's like you're stapling upside down. So, you have to be careful because you wanna be close to the edge here you don't want to be down too far and you don't want to be up above this flap. It's like <laughs> just perfect, right? <laughs> it's like Tyler asks me how I want something and I'm like, just perfect, you know, not too close to the edge, but okay. So I'm going with my stapler and I'm trying just to make sure that I'm not, oh, I might be up too far. So I'm going to come down just a hair and I'm trying to look at the edge here so that I'm not too far over. Perfect. <laughs> See, just perfect. I'm that close to the edge. Now this stapler is different than the one I used in class. That one's a smaller staple, but it's really okay. Whichever works for you. So then you're gonna do the same thing on this side. 
I'm gonna kinda line up my stapler and I'm gonna check around to make sure. And if you think you're up too high, just move down. It's okay if they're not perfectly aligned. Nobody's gonna notice and if they do, tell them not to worry about those kind of things. <laughs> There's more important things to worry about in life. Okay, so that is good. Did you see that? You don't wanna be above the score line and you don't wanna be past the cuff line here. You wanna be just perfect. All right, so that's how that goes together. Now you have a piece of designer series paper, four inches by three inches. This is like the most ideal size of DSP because you get 12 pieces like this out of one 12 by 12 sheet. Love it. Okay, you're gonna get your liquid glue going and put that down. You have to do that next before we put the flap down. So that's gonna be centered near the bottom here. So centered left to right and about an eighth inch off the bottom. Okay, now what I'm gonna use is tear and tape. You could definitely use uh, liquid glue, you could use your red sticky tape, whatever you want, but I'm gonna put it over the top of the staples there so that it really sticks to the staples and makes a good secure edge. That one's gonna be kinda hard to do. I'm gonna put it right next to it, and I'm gonna run one across the top, you know, close to the edge without going over, like, like that, okay. So again, if you wanna use liquid glue, you could. You just wanna give it time to dry because those staples stick up a little bit. Okay, and then this one. Now, you see I'm not worrying about over here because when that flips down, it's gonna secure that, okay? So far, so good, right? Boom. Now, we have a piece of mint. This is four by one and a quarter. And then the brushed copper is what is this? One and a sixteenth by three and th three and thirteen sixteenths. And for those of you at home that are doing this, I have embossed it. Actually, Pat Torres embossed it for you. I can't say that I did it. Um, this is the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. Love it. One of my favorites. I actually like it more than Subtle now. <laughs> Hi, Angela Orvis. Okay, so what you can do is flip that over, and you're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that. And that's gonna secure on top of the mint. And just give it a second to secure or to bond. And then flip that over. And then put a little bit see more glue on the back of that one. And then that's gonna go on our over flap thing. Hi, Cheryl from Ohio. Nice to have you with us tonight. So there's that's our card base. That's basically that's it. Now we get to decorate it. So in your kits, you don't have two of these. I found this on the floor. So I, had, I picked it up. I thought maybe I lost it. I've punched, So I kept it really simple for this card. No stamping on here. Um, I have a mint maple leaf, a Cajun maple leaf, and then a tan brushed bronze oak leaf. Angela, I was really wondering. I was like, well, this is the first class you hadn't signed up in for a little while. So I was a little worried, but I thought maybe you were busy. I had, Angela, I had 44 people sign up for this class and every kit is gone. <laughs> it's crazy, so crazy. So I'm gonna put this one, the, the Cajun one on first, off to the side here. And then we're gonna do the mint one. Oh, actually we're gonna do the oak leaf. I'm just putting dimensionals. You see, I just put a, a baby dimensional. So I've got the oak leaf in the center, slightly covering up Cajun. And then I've got the mint covering up the oak leaf slightly. And I kind of got them nestling together to make a little bouquet. So in your little baggie from me, you have a piece of linen thread that's short. It's like two inches. And you've got another little acorn. And what you're going to do is weave the linen thread through the acorn and grab a glue dot. Promise you, no knots here. <laughs> Just put it down. That little glue dot's gonna go right in the middle of your oak leaf, just like that. Oh, I think that I remember that I put a little glue dot underneath the oak leaf just to keep him sturdy down here. So let's get that down there. That'll hold that. Now that glue dot on the top here, that is where I'm gonna set my linen thread right into it. Squish it down good. So now you've got <laughs> that little guy just hanging out. <laughs> Okay, Kathy Jackson, are you watching? <laughs> this is for you. 
Linda Smith, if you're watching, this is for you. Like, this bud's for you. This bow's for you. Okay? Grab your bow maker. <laughs> We're making a bow just like that one. Different peg sizes. I'm making this one to be one and a half inches-ish, I think, if I had to guess. <clears throat> oh, it's like two inches. Not quite. So this is generally how I tie bows, and this is how I did all your bows in class. <clears throat> so take, so usually the ribbon is on the spool like this. I'm a left, I'm a righty. So just keep that in mind. If you're a lefty, you might do it the opposite. I always take the loose end in my right hand because that's my dominant hand that I work better with. And when I, I take the loose end in my right hand, I wrap it around the back of the nails. So this in essence is the front, this is the back. So on the back, so on <laughs> the, the side of the nails that's away from me, I have about this much, it's about three inches and it's about an inch and a half past the end of the block. So you start with the loose end on your right and it goes underneath the left side. And now you're basically are making an X. Okay, so they're crossing on my side of the nails. The loose end is gonna go over the top, and now it's on the front, which is making the front of the bow. It's very important that this is smooth and flush. So if you have wider ribbon, you want that to be nice and flat. So you're gonna go over the top and bring it under. So I use my pointer finger to push it under, which frees up my, my left hand to grab it. And then lastly, I have to, secure this so that it stays shut. So I'm taking the loose left end and I guess bringing it, oh, I'm making a knot now. <laughs> I don't know. It's like going under and over. Now you've got this loose tail action going on. So what you want to do is tie the tails so that they're coming down into the left and to the right as you're knotting it. So I'm, I, I pull them, I'm pulling them down left and right. And with this ribbon is really wiry, it's like weird. So I'm tightening it really good so it doesn't want to come apart. And so basically that's the front. And then now the knot in the back is the back. And now what I've done is I'm just cutting that. So I have not wasted, but just a little bit because now this is still on the spool. I don't recommend cutting off what you think you're going to need and then having it too long or too short. Okay, then what you do is you take your nails out and now you've got a cutesy little bow okay so kathy <laughs> and and linda i know both of you have asked me for instructions uh, on a bow making so if you guys have caught kelly has done a tip tuesday video and she did a technique thursday video did she do a good job give her some love and some thumbs ups if you liked her videos and want her to keep doing them <laughs> because i told her that there's been requests for bow maker tips. So I think Kelly and I are gonna try to get our shenanigans together and make a bow making video specifically for those people that want a short, quick little bow video. So you see, I put a little glue dot down and okay, so far so good. Grab your ribbon scissors and I'm gonna tr you're gonna trim the little bit of uh, linen thread. So they're a little shorter. You could do a little shorter if you want. So you see a little bit of your oak leaf there. Okay. Oh yeah, she did a great job. <laughs> okay. Then your ribbons. So this little tail is still kind of going a little bit where I don't want them to. So I'm going to take a little glue dot and put that right where I want my tail to go. The other side looked fine. I don't want to use a glue dot if I don't need to. And so now you can trim your tail like that from your tail. I bet my hair is getting in there. <laughs> my head, I'm like leaning forward. Yeah, Randy, Kelly did a great job. So there's our outside of our card. I love it. <laughs> I was so like this little bit right here just makes me happy. Uh, so, okay, we have a little stamping to do, but not a lot. So <laughs> I kept, I'm trying to design these cards with you guys in mind that might not have stamp sets at home so that you can use basically any sentiments that you have. Um, let's see here. Oh, Lori wants a bow maker. Okay, so Lori, do me a favor. Lori, this is my email address, chrismbertram at msn.com. Uh, send me an email, 
that you would like a bow maker and we will hook up the bow maker action for you. Okay. I know Mary Carls, you wanted a bow maker too. I will probably remember that, but it wouldn't hurt to send me a quick email <laughs> just as a reminder. Uh, I try to remember a lot, but it always helps to have it in writing for later on. So I'm trying to stamp this, have a beautiful day. Um, it comes from the same set. I love the fonts in that set. So I'm going to try to center this. We're going to go on that side and centered straight all the above. Okay. I like it. I can live with that. And then on the bottom, we're going to do another little maple leaf just like that. And then we're going to shut the brown. So the espresso and Cajun craze ink pads definitely got workouts <laughs> with this class okay, and that's gonna fill in here um, I do have a PDF tutorial for all these cards as well um, after the video is done tonight and I've got it uploaded into YouTube I will be publishing this the tutorial is ten dollars or it's free I think I put the tutorials free with a twenty dollar order so if anybody wants all the written instructions and with pictures all the measurements for this class. I have it in, um, I think it's like an, a six page document and that will be available sometime after this weekend into next week when I can <laughs> get it published. <laughs> so, all right, that's our inside and it just slips right into the pocket of that card. Just like that. You like it? <laughs> I love it. I just, this little bit right here makes me, I just said it. It makes me so happy. It makes me want to smile. It's just, I love it. So if you don't have the stamp set and you want these cute little punches, you could just get the little leaf punches and the acorn. So there we go. All right. We have three cards done. We are rocking and rolling hoochie coo guys. So that one's good. And last, and then certainly not least is the Mac Daddy card. <laughs> Everybody went goo goo gaga for this. I just, it was the last card I designed. It was the not the hardest card to design, but I had to work with what DSP I had left. And if you look back, like, you know, I had used this DSP, this one, which is the back side of that one, and then that one. And in the monthly class, we did another DSP. If you guys remember, it was um, the orange with the leaf and the background. Okay, so I had all I had left was this pumpkin paper. I'm like, what am I gonna do with this pumpkin paper? Oh my goodness. And so this is what we did with the pumpkin paper. I should say me, <laughs> this is what I did. Um, used some more of the gold with a different embossing folder from wrapped and texture. Brought in a gold hoop, lots of foliage. Uh, Pat Torres die cut all these little circles for me, all the foliage. She did all the embossing. So big round of applause to Pat. I love you. Thank you so much. She made it so much easier for me for the to-goes and also for people in class. So for your kits, you're going to have to pull out your gold hoop. These gold hoops are amazing. Like they look so awesome and add so much to a card. So I think that you get 10 of them, 10 of them for 750 or 20 of them for 750. I can't remember right now, but uh, <laughs> I can look it up or somebody can look it up. But in your kit, you've got a piece of espresso. This is your normal ha hamburger. And this time it's scored in the middle. So it's your eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that's normal. But now what we're doing is we're bringing back a quarter and a half. So this is scored at a quarter and a half from the one side. So it's kind of like the pocket card we just did, but we're not making it into a pocket. But it would, oh my goodness, this would be a cute pocket card. Like you could have stapled the size and made a little pocket card. Okay, anyways, then you should all have the piece of vanilla with the vanilla, that's what I call it. It's four by five and a quarter. Bye, Kathy. You can catch the replay later. I'm gonna make another bow. And so that's three bows you get to watch in this one video. <laughs> okay, so that'll be for our inside. It needs a little stamping. So our piece of DSP is one and a quarter by five and a quarter. The other side is that speckly brown and crumb cake. That's gonna get glued onto the vanilla. The gold is one by five and a quarter and i don't know if i have the embossing folder down here uh, no i don't think i do but that's in the holiday catalog called wrapped in texture so let's go ahead and get him 
<laughs> glued down. One less thing to lose, right? <laughs> so, all right, so that's going to go right on this flap right here. And, oh, see, it's wiggly. Wiggle, wiggle with it. All right. So, in your kits, oh no, Stella has been on a break. Hang on, Jean, you haven't been reminding me. You guys, we gotta stop for a second. Stella needs to, Stella, <laughs> these leaves right here. Okay, Stella, that on that card. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what I would Stella on this card. So, um, I would not Stella these little guys because they will smear and bleed. So we're not Stella. Stella gets, a, Stella gets a break from this card. Okay, back on with business here. So you in your kits, all right, I have to disclaim this right now. When I designed this card, I originally had just one circle and stamping a sentiment here. And after I had all my foliage, I added a second circle. And everybody who got their kits mailed last Friday, a sad face, like crying my eyes, I didn't give you two of these. I only gave you one. It's some of you then I caught it that did porch pickup this week. I gave you a second one because I figured it out on Saturday. So what this extra one does is it gives you a cl it cleans it up. So before we get started, if you got your kit mailed to you um, and you don't have a circle in it, grab yourself a piece of scrap paper. It could be brown. It could be any matching color. It could be vanilla. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a scratch, and that's all this is, is a scrap piece of paper. You're gonna cut yourself a circle. Just trace it with a scissors. Don't even trace it, just free cut it. <laughs> you're gonna just cut yourself a circle. And honestly, it, it can be half of a circle because really you only see just a little bit there. So honestly, if you don't have that big of a piece of paper, like it could be like literally something that looks like that. That's what you're gonna need to do if you want it to look cleaned up like I have here. So you're basically gonna cut yourself a circle. So that's my bad. You know, I uh, I didn't think about it until we were working on it on Saturday during class. So that's if you want it to look cleaned up. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you don't do this. But that was my alternative for you guys at home if you didn't have that circle. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to stamp a sentiment. Now, I will have to tell you that this is a pain in the butt. If you have the stamp set and you want to do thank you, you have to mask the you, stamp the thank, clean it, mask the thank, and then stamp the you. A lot of work. People didn't want to do that. <laughs> Nobody did that in class last night or on Saturday. What everybody did is we used hello. <laughs> hello. Um, you called. Uh, that's from the Life is Beautiful set, and it looks really, really nice in the circle. So just grab your espresso ink. And you guys, if you want, use anything else that you have at home. And what I would recommend doing, though, is whatever you stamp, you want to keep it more to the right and down a little bit because that bow covers up the top left. So I'm going to stamp this right about here. That's it. Okay. So any small sentiment will fit perfectly fine in there. And that's about, oh, we have to stamp the inside. So as long as we've got this in front of us, let's do this right away. This is that leaf. I had stamped it earlier already um, for the one card, but this two-step stamping, I'm gonna stamp the left side here because that paper goes on the right. So don't forget about that. And then the other part is Cajun Craze. Now, if you want, it looks good at full strength, or you could do it at second strength. So just ink that up, and again, just hover over the top of it till you get it right where it needs to be. And that's the stamping for this card. Sentiment, if you want one, put it in the inside. Now, just be careful, because you are going to be gluing this piece of paper onto here. So your sentiment's gonna have to be more on the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. So let's let's get this down. <laughs> little by little, we're getting this card assembled. So I like to lift this up and make sure that everything's flush. If I cut your piece of paper just a hair big, just take your scissors and trim off the end. I'm hoping not a hair small or <laughs> some short. Okay. So then this is gonna get glued on the inside. 
Yes, you could use your your Stampin' Markers to color your sentiment. Absolutely. Yep, if you had like a brown espresso marker or any water-based brown marker for those at home, you could you could color your stamp versus having to use washi tape and mask it. Okay, so that gets glued in here. So now when you shut this, isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, I love it. Okay, let's work on this <laughs> chunky monkey part here. So... Everybody asks me, how do you put how do you put the hoop down? Okay, it's actually not so crazy. So you see there's a bow there and you see there's foliages over here. You're gonna put a glue dot right in those areas and that's where your bow is going to adhere. And make sure it's like right where it's gonna be on the bottom. And so I'm only doing two because this area and this area. So now this needs to rest right on top of that. And see, you don't have to worry about that stuff because your bow is going to cover it up and your acorn is going to cover it up. Okay, so that's how you attach that hoop onto the circle. Now, that's a stitch circle too. Hi, Linda. Um, so that's a stitch circle. Okay, next, foliage. All right. Think you girls know by now, one of my favorite die sets <laughs> is the Forever Flourishing Dies. That's where this came from, this came from, and the, I call this one the horns because it kind of looks like horns. Uh, I, I would have to say this set is in my top five. So this one, we are going to do a little workout with Stella. So grab these two. It's better to do these here. I'm so bow happy. <laughs> I just read Kathy's comment that she's so bow happy. Okay, good. Kathy was having a hard time making bows and... You know, you got to keep seeing it. And it's like riding a bike. I think once you know how to do it, you never forget, I think. But <laughs> but you got to do it often enough that you don't um, that you don't forget. So we're, we're just stelling all of our leaves here. So Stella just adds that little bit of glitter. And as you need to rejuvenate her, like let's say she gets dry, you just have to, there's two buttons on the side that say push. And then she will, oh, look at that. <laughs> you can see that it got darker. Oh man, she's really glitterific right now. Okay, so get that all glitterified. Boom, okay. Now, we're gonna assemble. So this is how I would do this. And if you have a different way to do it, no problem. I'm just gonna show you how I would do it. These guys, I would rip them in half, okay? Cause there's two of them. There are different spots in the card. This guy, if you guys were with me for some of my past classes, I used this one in, I didn't use it in this manner. If you put this on here, it's just you lose all that. So what I did is I cut the top off and then I cut a side off. Now, it doesn't matter which side. You could cut it along the right side or the left. It doesn't matter. It's connected here and it's connected there. So they're not going to just fall apart on you. So you got that in three pieces. And then you have the Cajun craze with that one. So what I did is I took my tear and tape and I ripped off two pieces. And they're, they're gonna go along the back, top, left side and take the paper off. Now, I, it's just, I wouldn't use liquid glue to do this. Glue dots could work. Um, this stuff could work too. The, the tape runner, you could run that along the back. But I choose tear and tape when I do something like this. So I've got this primed and ready to stick some things to it. So if you got the card over here, you've got the Cajun one kind of coming off the top left like that. Now don't press them hard right away in case you want to take it off and move it around. Then I've got this one coming down along the side here like so. Now, if it doesn't want to stick because of the tear tape not being in the right spot, grab a little more tear and tape and just get it where it needs to be so that it'll stick to it. That's where you could have used a glue dot, but I just wanted to put a little more tear tape. So I'm going to hold it like it's going up and down. you got to be careful that that little cut piece there isn't sticking up in midair. So I've got it kind of tucked away. And then... You can choose to use all three of the pieces or just use two. Um, it just depends how it fills in for you. Like I'm gonna put that one there. And again, I lost a little stick, so I'm gonna put it right, 
right there. And then this last one, I'm gonna have it coming up like, like that. Okay, now you gotta be careful with if how it's cut there. I'm gonna round that off so that it doesn't look like it was cut like that. So this last one, we're gonna do kind of like that. Okay, so now it's all sticking in the back here, okay? All right, so now well, I guess what I was trying to show you about it being messy looking, so when you flip this over, you're gonna see all that roughage back there. And that's not that attractive, so that's why I put another one of these circles in the back because it cleans up the roughage. Now again, if you didn't get one from me, I greatly apologize, but you can improvise right now. Grab a piece of vanilla paper and cut yourself your circle. So, all right, so don't worry about the gold for right now. We're gonna put that in in a second. So now we'll just put a little bit of glue on the back of this and this will go, now I'm putting the smooth side out so the rough side gets glued to the inside. Linda, you're gonna love this set when you get it. Okay, so now what we've done is we've kind of closed off our, our stuff. <laughs> All right, so how I'm gonna attach this to the card is I'm gonna put some dimensionals on here. I'm gonna use black ones because I can. I'll put four of them on because I can. Okay, so this is now now that they're placed on here you don't risk going to that like if you try to put it on the back of this you might go too far to the left or the right so what you're going to do is they're on here now you're just a matter of eyeballing this where you want it i'm going to say right about there okay now these dudes are going to come out and they're going to so i've got two of them they were originally one i ripped them in half so i'm going to put a glue dot and I'm going to put it behind this one and we're going to tuck that. Oh man, I should have put it. Well, it's okay. So you're going to just squeeze it between your, your foliage. So there's one. And then this last one. So in this card, I've got it like tucked in between, like up in here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this guy right here. And I'm going to put a glue dot on there. So this back here, that one right there, I'm gonna put a glue dot on that. <laughs> and we're gonna sneak this one in here and pretend that it's longer than what it really is, okay? So, <laughs> I had to lift up my glasses for that one. So now that's in there. So it's stuck really nicely on this back piece and you could have put it tucked. I've got, I made them all different. It just depends on how your foliage lands. Now. A bow, so bows on your underwears. Okay, so this is the Forever Greenery ribbon, which goes with this die set. Here's your third and final bow for the evening, ladies. <laughs> Loose end in your right hand. It goes under, crosses. Now this is wider ribbon, so you see what I'm doing here? I'm making sure it's completely flat. It goes over the top, keeping this flat, and now bring it under. And now you're gonna tie your knot. And so remember that tails go down and to the right. This stuff reminds me of cheesecloth. It's very, very flexible. Um, the ends fray really, really easily. So that's just how the ribbon is. And you just let them fray. It's okay. Hey, that rhymed. All right, so grab another glue dot, put that near your gold. I'm not going to put the hump of the bow on the gold. I'm going to put it below it and it's going to just like get squished right into it and kind of get it so that like the glue was right below it and I put it right up into the bow. Now that, <laughs> I love it when they do that. So then this guy, like the tails are coming down like that. Grab your ribbon scissors can clean them up just a hair if you want. Now, I don't know how much you guys have or don't have. Oh, I'm trying to cut that paper. So there, and then we're just gonna trim this one slightly. I mean, they're gonna get ruffled up again, but that's okay. So, ah, come on. Okay, right. now, I showed you girls how to do the, 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 the these little guys. So, 
for those of you who have the kits for me, you have another piece of vanilla that's just, you know, it's about that size to fit those. You have espresso for all three of the outlines. The little guy here, the acorn is crumb cake and soft suede. The oak leaf is Cajun. And here you go. I never used terracotta tile, so I thought, why not? Why not bring out terracotta tile and make it a little baby star for the night? So the maple leaf is terracotta tile. It's an in color on its second year. It'll be retiring this coming June or May. Glue dots. That's what we're going to use to put these on. I would not use dimensionals. It'll make it like humpy on top of the gold hoop. So you're going to put a dimensional or a glue dot on the ring and then you're going to stick the acorn to that and then grab another glue dot and that's going to go on the ring for the oak leaf and I've kind of got that <laughs> I got I kind of got that guy riding up the hoop that way <laughs> at an angle okay and then the last one is going on the bottom here like hanging down below and he's kind of going kitty wampus off to the side and glue dots I liquid glue no not going to stick you got to do your glue dots for that. All right, finishing touches. We have the most amazing gilded gems that are part of the Ornate Garden suite of things, suite of products. Everybody should have gotten a big one, a medium one, and a small one. And <laughs> I went through almost all of them, and all I have left are two baby ones here. So we're going to use a small one over here, a big one over here as well and then the medium one will go up over here somewhere I'm gonna put it right in between the squash and the pumpkin okay I think we did it <laughs> it was a masterpiece right like so many people said in class like they didn't think they were gonna give this card away <laughs> how many of you will give this card away and how many of you are gonna keep it that's what I'm curious <laughs> it's like the other option too, if you don't want to do the back like that, you could glue this flat so that it's secure. So that when you open up your card, it opens like this. If you don't want to secure that, then your card will open like that. And it's so cool because you can see all of the prettiness and in one like focal view. Okay, it should be framed, yes. <laughs> like. I took ideas from about three different cards for this one to bring it all together. So, um, yeah, you could definitely, if you like doing framed artwork, you could just make this, don't even make it into a card. Just make, like, take your quarter sheet and just make it exactly like this and put it in a little frame. I, that is a really good idea. I would put this up on my desk or on um, display at home. I like that idea. <laughs> good idea. Okay, it's oh Donna, you're making yours into a birthday card. Good, I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, so did you girls? I should say girls and guys. Did you have a favorite? So I'm partial to this last card that we created, but I mean the whole like the whole designer series paper is kind of what set the tone for all these cards because the designer paper had the Cajun, and then it had the mint it has the espresso like I I like I don't know I'm kind of like torn I like that one but everybody was like it was so hard to choose which card was a favorite so so my drawing I'm going to be doing for next week live when we do the fun folds is I'm going to give away my three card my four cards that I made tonight so for those that commented those that liked and that shared throughout, I, I go and I take the names and I do drawings. And so these will be given away next week. So make sure you pay attention the next week after class to see if you win. And I'll also make a note like who won them on my page. Uh, so Faye, this is your favorite. Yeah, yeah, I just gotta, I just love it too. So, okay. So we're officially done with, I'm so sad. Like, we're officially done with the Gilded Autumn cards. I have been looking forward to making these with you and sharing these with you. Like, I think they're my little prides and joys. Like, <laughs> and now we're done with them already. So I do like the idea of, you know, framing some of these and making them into little framed artwork. They're awesome. So, okay. So...
just a reminder, we're going to do drawings very soon, and I'm going to make announcements of who won stuff. So um, just a quick reminder, too, the fun folds is next week. A $40 order if you want them mailed for porch pickup. They're free with a $25 order, and I think you gals know by now, and if you don't, you might be new, but that $15 difference, the basically the profit I make on that is what covers the cost for shipping. So that basically it's fair for both of us so that uh, you still are getting product with your order and then it helps me offset the $4 for shipping it. So, so it's a win-win for both of us and I really appreciate all orders. You guys, I can't wait to tell you where I rank in the company. Not that I care, but I'm super excited to see where I sat because I worked my butt off this last year and you, <laughs> I think you guys saw that. So, um, okay, we have a couple different drawings. So we are going to do a top fan. So to become a top fan, you have to like, comment, and share on the Facebook page. And I looked at it today, um, right before, literally right before class, it was 515. I made a list. I, um, <laughs> I wrote down everybody's names that is coded as a top fan in my community. There were 29 people. So can thank you to everybody for being a top fan. Um, what I have here is a list of 29 people. So we're going to grab my phone and we're, see I'm watching myself, we're gonna go to the internet and I'm gonna do the random number generator. So what we're gonna do is put in a number 29 and what's gonna happen is after I hit generate, a number is gonna pop up and we're gonna see who the lucky winner is. So drum roll, Brrr, okay, it is number four. Okay, Melanie, Melanie Chandler. Uh, you are the lucky winner of uh, Memories and More Happiness Blooms cardstock pack here. So I don't know if you are into memory keeping or not, but this is great for that purpose or for just creating cards. I wish I could just open this up and show everybody, but it's full of like decorative designer pieces of paper in big sizes and then half sheets. So Melanie, this one is yours. So um, what I'll do is... We'll see if you're going to be doing a class with me sometime soon. If you are, I'll pop it in with that. I'm looking for a pen. Here we go. And if you're not, we'll pop it in the mail. So Melanie, congratulations on winning this for the top fan. So we're going to just do that. Melanie, cool beans. Congratulations. All right. Then what we have to do, where's my list? We have the monthly creative challenge. Okay. So we have to figure out. There's two things. Yes, congratulations, Melanie. Um, there's two things that I do on a monthly basis. One, is, one I've been doing since, I don't know, from earlier this year. It's called the Monthly Creative Challenge. And I have a, like, a couple different themes that you can pick from, and they always coincide with my customer swap group. And I don't remember what the themes were exactly, but there was Halloween, fall, and something else. And you could submit entries throughout the whole month until yesterday. And then what Kelly and I do is we look at all the submissions and then we pick if, as long as they're based off the theme and um, based off of creativity because it's a creative challenge. And then we select a winner. And um, I'm very happy to announce that the winner, and I, I hope I don't say your name wrong, but is Feline Mays or is it Feline or Feline Mays? And I know you were watching earlier. I saw you pop on. So you are... I'm, I'm not sure if you have this or not, but I have this awesome little half inch circle punch. They are amazing for making the insides of flowers, um, these little half inch circles. So when we get to the mystery card night, I'm gonna show you an idea what you could do with this, but I have this punch for you. I is one of my favorite punches and Stampin' Up! no longer makes it. So I stocked up on some of these because they are amazing. So if you already have a half inch circle punch, I will pick out something else for you because I don't like giving prizes to people if you already have that stuff. So, but you were the winner of the creative challenge. Okay, perfect. So then um, we also have another challenge that we do on a monthly basis and it's called the card class challenge. Class card challenge, card class challenge. The card class card challenge. <laughs> I think it took us a little bit to figure out which order to put it, but you gals, I think 22 of you or 24 of you did my online class tonight. And I love to see that you complete the projects. Like 
I don't want you to sit with your kits unassembled and collecting dust for five years. I want you to make your cards and send them out or put them in a little spot that you can always refer back to them as samples. I want them put together. So I started last month the class card challenge and there were a few people that submitted entries for cards and they showed pictures of the cards that they put together and thank you, I really enjoyed seeing them. And there were a few people that I put in for the drawing for that. And I'm very happy to announce that Joanna Bastin uh, won, and Bastin or Bastin, I always, I'm not sure if I say your guys' names correct, because <laughs> I hate butchering them if I butcher them. But Joanna, I know you were watching earlier, and you did this class with me tonight. So Joanna, I have a prize for you as well. And I have here a paper pack. And this is the in color paper from 2019, 2021. It's still current colors, but it's last year's designer series paper. It's a whole pack. And so I have this prize for you. And same thing, if you're gonna be doing a class with me soon, then I will put this in the mail with your, your next class. Otherwise, we'll make out other plans. So congratulations to Joanna. You were the lucky winner there for that. And then I also have a newsletter that I publish monthly. I think I missed one this last year, but I publish a newsletter monthly and the October one is ready to get published. I will be doing that tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. And oh no, there was a sad, unhappy face. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes the grumpy face comes through there, girls. I don't know why that happens, but um, <laughs> we should be happy for our winners. I'm not sure what it was from, but um, so the newsletter will be published tonight or tomorrow morning before I start work and I always put in a hidden question and the hidden question for the September newsletter was um, have you ever participated in a swap group and would you consider doing it if if you haven't. And so I think that there weren't many people who responded, but I put those responses into a hat too. And Jean Maxwell, you were the winner for the newsletter question. And so for the newsletter question, I give away a $10 gift certificate. So congratulations. You have a little baby shopping spree from me. And since you live down in Arizona, what I do is I give you a rebate. So after you place your order online, then I PayPal you $10 or I will send you a check for $10. Um, but you'll just order whatever you want. Okay, so congratulations to all of our winners. So again, top fan was Melanie. Uh, creative challenge you was Feline. Joanna was the winner of the class card challenge. And then the newsletter was Jean. But we're not done yet, ladies. Okay, so... Did you participate in the mystery card night on Monday? I think a bunch of you did. There were 51 people who submitted entries into that. And um, <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta give away some prizes. So we're gonna do two prizes, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you my card. So. <laughs> it was so hard not like I, these were my pieces if, if you were watching that night I had a white card base like that and then I have blushing bride for my piece of cardstock on the left now the DSP that I used on the right here was flowers for every season um, that is a current pack and I grabbed out one of the pieces for my background and then this is the stamp set that I use, Daisy Lane. My focal stamp, I actually stamped it twice and I punched it out versus die cutting or fussy cutting. And I stamped a little leaf action stem on the bottom. I used my darker shaded spruce ink. And then I did rip the bottom like was an optional thing to do. I added a little baby bow. And then do you just love those beaded pearl trinkets? I think they are amazing. So that I threw on there at the end. I'm like, oh, let's put that in. But that's where this little half inch circle punch comes in. You could punch that and use that for the center of your flower. So that was my card. I didn't stamp a sentiment because I can use this for anything that I want. And I put the little baby daisy in the bottom corner. So that was my simple card layout that I, I did with the, the measurements and instructions. So I wanted to share that with you. So that I have to remember is for Feline. Okay, so we have um, a list of people. So I'm going to keep the camera flipped down. And uh, Kelly, thank you so much <laughs> for the, um, you guys are going to see my email here. So Kelly sent me a list here. So we have da -da -da -da, 51 people that submitted cards for the drawing. 
And <laughs> I think about it now and I realize I didn't grab two prizes, but we have 51 people. You guys, I have it together most of the time, but not all of the time. <laughs> so don't let me fool you. So this is for the mystery night. And we're going to actually, we got two people. So we have 51 people that submitted cards. So when I hit generate, we're going to write down the number, number 31. We're going to go over to number 31 and it is, aha, Amy. And your last name is Estrada. Okay. So Amy is our first winner. And then our second winner, we're going to erase this, write 51 again, <laughs> just because hit generate number eight. Okay, so number eight, so our second winner, let's go here, drum roll, brrr, number, what did we say, number eight is, oh, Deanne, oh my gosh, Deanne is from Michigan, and she's done a couple classes with me as well, so I don't know, I gotta be honest with you too, <laughs> I gotta go find some prizes from my stash, and I'm gonna surprise you with something. I I guess I think I had in my head that I had enough stuff down here, but apparently I didn't, and I can't grab my stuff that I've been using <laughs> and give that for prizes, but I will have some nice prizes for both Deanne and Amy, uh, I promise, um, and the, I'll try to get everything in the mail over the weekend or by Monday, so, okay. So how did we do? What is the time? I'm hour 40. That's not so bad. Like I could have felt that those cards might have taken a little bit longer. So, all right. So a great big congratulations to all of the winners. I really appreciate all of your support on Facebook and taking classes from me and making orders or purchasing from me. You girls, I love it. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel like when I make and design cards that it's not just for me, it's for all of you. And I'll tell you, there's something that I love about when I design a card and I see it made 44 times and sometimes made different and sometimes made the same, but it's like, wow, I created that and you guys are making them and that makes me feel so good. So I really appreciate all of your support. I am starting to like, like know all you guys by first names too, it seems. And so that's awesome. So I hope that you really enjoyed the Gilded Autumn class with me tonight. Um, I hope that you put your cards together. And the thing about the class card challenge and the monthly card challenge is that, oh, scavenger hunt. Okay, thank you for that, Jean. I'll tell you guys all about that. So um, we can only pin one announcement to the top so that you always see it. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can have those two monthly contests in the same post, but not being confusing. So we're working on that. So right now the monthly creative challenge for October is already posted and we're figuring out how we can add in the class card challenge. So Jean just asked about the scavenger hunt. So <laughs> scavenger hunt was due by last night and I will, I will be completely honest with you. I do not look at them until after they're due. So I have a folder of about 20 of them that got turned in. And what I will do is sit down for two hours and grade them, just like a good teacher would do. <laughs> so I will not use red ink. I've been told by my students to use a pretty ink like pink or purple and not red. So what will happen is by next Thursday, I have to save some of those announcements of prizes for next week, right? So next week, Thursday, I'll announce who wins the four cards from tonight and also the scavenger hunt. So I didn't forget about it. I just, it was due last night at midnight and I worked today and then I had class tonight. So I, I honestly will sit down at some point this weekend and I'll work on grading them. So this is where the teacher in me comes out, which I wasn't a teacher, but I get to be a teacher now. So, okay. Anybody else have any questions about what we did or need help with anything? You just got to reach out to me. Um, my host code is always down here if you need to place an order for an up for one of the classes. Oh my goodness, Jean. <laughs> You're awesome, Jean. So Jean wanted me to remind you, and I also wanted to remind you, that Stampin' Up! has a designer series paper sale right now. So there are select packs of DSP, designer series paper, on sale for 15% off. And my newsletter, which I'm going to be publishing probably tonight, it has in there the ones that are on sale and it's not the specialty paper so like this gilded autumn is a specialty paper it's got the foil in it so it's the non-specialty papers and not all of them because the uh, this flower one 
the flowers for every season is not in there. So, but it's almost all of them, but not quite. So 15% um, off select ESPs. It's October 1st through the 31st. So it's all month long. Yay! Jean, you rock. You're a rock star. <laughs> I need you like, like you're my Kelly um, while we are watching me, <laughs> keeping me straight. So I love it. Thank you. So everything else too is going to, like I got a lot of stuff in my newsletter. So it'll be found on my blog later tonight. And I'll also publish on Facebook. I'll put a post out there with a link to it so you guys can read it um, on your computers or your tablets or your phone. So wonderful. Okay. Well, on that note, if I didn't forget anything else, <laughs> you guys have a great rest of your night. Enjoy your long <laughs> Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday weekend. Um, and then um, stay safe. <clears throat> stay healthy too. This crazy COVID is going crazy around Wisconsin here, I hear. So wherever you are, stay safe and wear a mask when you go out in public. <laughs> Don't get the bug. And um, we'll catch you next week, Thursday live for fun folds and be prepared because I think the last fun folds lasted two and a half hours. So I can't promise that I'll keep it down to two hours next week, but we'll, we'll get through all the cards. So love you guys. Thank you so much. Sunshine and happiness to you. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye.